welcome back in the earlier lecture we already created azure account and we made ourselves familiar with the azure portal azure web ui now it's time to get into the databricks so first thing for learning databricks or using databricks for your project is to create a databricks workspace we are in the azure cloud we want to learn how to create Databricks workspace in the Azure cloud. So in this lecture, I'll help you learn how to create a Databricks workspace in Azure cloud and get access to the Databricks platform. So let's start. For creating Databricks workspace in the Azure cloud, you have to log into your Azure portal. So let me go there. Log into portal.azure.com and get into your Azure cloud. Uh, here I am. So I am on the Azure portal homepage. The Azure portal homepage might not look the same for you as it looks for me, uh, but nothing to worry. On your homepage, you might see a link for Azure Databricks. If you are new, you might not see that because this is a list of frequently used services. So if you are new on the Azure portal or you created a new account, you might not see all this. But nothing to worry. We want to go to the Azure Databricks service homepage. So you can go there uh, simply searching the Azure Databricks in the search bar. So go to search bar and search for Azure Databricks and you will see a link for the Azure Databricks. Click that link and it will take you to the Azure Databricks service homepage. And this is the pay page where you will see all your Databricks workspaces. I haven't created even a single workspace yet, so I don't see anyone here. But the idea is for your projects, you might want to create multiple Databricks workspaces. Maybe one workspace for one project, another workspace for another project, third workspace for third project. Or even you can have multiple workspaces for a single project. For example, you can have one workspace for development environment, another Databricks workspace for QA, and maybe for one more for production. So you may have multiple workspaces in a typical case. But let's start with the first workspace. So you can create a new Databricks workspace. Hit the create button here and Azure will show you a Databricks workspace creation wizard. Here it is. And there are multiple tabs where we can define different things. Uh, the first tab is the basic tab. And on this basic tab, you have to choose your subscription. Subscription is your billing account. I am using pay as you go subscription for myself. Uh, you might be using free tier subscription, but that's perfectly fine. You can use free tier subscription or you may opt to upgrade your free tier subscription to pay as you go. Uh, the recommendation is that upgrade your free tier subscription to pay as you go because free tier subscription comes with a lot of restrictions which might not be sufficient um, for this course for doing everything that we want to do uh, in this course so you can upgrade your pay free tier subscription to pay as you go subscription and still use your 200 uh, us dollars free credits for one month. If you upgrade, your credits will still remain with you for one month and Azure will not charge you anything. It All your uh, expenses are adjusted against your $200 free credits. But once your credit expires in a month, uh, Azure will start charging you for your services, which is not very expensive. I'll keep on helping you minimize your uh, cost during this course for all your hands-on activity 
and maybe keep on giving you some estimates of how much uh, it might cost you for doing what activities so you can plan to spend some money for your azure uh, cloud for learning this course anyways so i am using my pay as you go subscription the second thing that we need to specify is the resource group so what is resource group you can get the help here a resource group is a collection of resources it's just a name and all your resources or services whatever you are creating for your project can be grouped under that name and that group share the same life cycle permissions and policies so what it means you can group multiple resources under a single resource group so you know that all these resources are related for one project right and if you want to delete them you can delete the resource group and all the resources that are under that same resource group can be deleted at once in one single shot so it's always uh, recommended to create one resource group for your project or one resource group for your learning activity and keep everything in the same resource group so when time comes to clean up you can clean up it easily so let me create a new resource group because this is first time i'm creating um, this work space and i don't have any existing resource group so let's create a new resource group let's call it uh, databricks course rg rg i it's a good practice to uh, keep some um, tag in the name so you can recognize what it is so databricks course rg rg stands for resource group so i can identify okay this is a resource group click okay and uh, data azure will create a resource group for you the next mandatory Uh, field is workspace name so we want to create a new workspace databricks workspace so it, let's give a name to the databricks workspace let's call it databricks course workspace you can call it dev workspace you can call it um, qa workspace or whatever name you can uh, want you can give the next thing is to select your uh, deployment region your cloud region so i'll go for us east uh, that's the cheapest region in azure so i prefer using us east the next item is to select pricing tier this pricing tier is for databricks pricing tier databricks offers two pricing tiers standard pricing tier and premium pricing tier standard is little cheap premium pricing tier is little expensive the main difference between standard and premium is role based access control so premium tier comes with role based access control and few other features are also there in the premium which are not there in the standard tier you can look for the documentation databricks documentation what is there in standard what is not there in standard but in the premium everything is there i'll go for the premium because we want to see everything and choose the premium tier for this uh you can go to next button and configure networking then encryption apply some tags and then finally create the databricks workspace but at this stage it is not mandatory to go all these uh, steps we can go for the default configurations for that and you can simply hit the review and create button at uh, right now so let me hit the review and create button and azure will validate all my configurations if everything looks fine it will allow me to create the workspace so validation successful and you can see the create button here right so let me hit the create button and it will start creating databricks workspace for me 
So what is Databricks Workspace? Databricks Workspace is nothing but a Databricks application, a serverless application. So what Azure is doing, it's launching Databricks serverless application for me. And the name for that serverless application instance is Databricks Course Workspace. Right. Once it is ready, I can access the Databricks workspace using a UI and start using Databricks for my data engineering project, for my development activity, for my testing activity, for a lot of other things that we will learn in this course. So deployment is in progress. Uh, it might take maybe 5-10 minutes to finish the deployment. So I'll pause the video here and come back again. Uh, when deployment is complete. Okay, so deployment is complete for my workspace and you can see a link here, go to resource. So you can click this go to resource and it will take you to a resource page. So this is my Databricks workspace resource page in the Azure cloud. It's not Databricks workspace yet. But if I want to go to Databricks Workspace, I can click the Launch Workspace button. It will open in a new tab and it will show me my Databricks Workspace. So it's always linked uh, with the Azure account. So uh, it works on a single sign-on. So my Workspace is already logged in using my Azure credentials. So it's opening for the first time. It might take a few minutes. Uh, but let it open. Uh, I'll come back to my Azure portal. So you can click the launch workspace and go to your workspace page. It looks like this. Uh, you can also copy this workspace URL and keep it with you. And whenever you want to log into your same workspace on this workspace, you can directly hit that URL uh, in your browser and it will allow you to log into your workspace. You may have to give your Azure credentials, your username and password. So that's how you can access Databricks workspace. Uh, on the next day, uh, if you are coming here uh, in the Azure portal home page or uh, you might see your workspace listed here. So if you want to open your workspace next day, you can click that workspace from there and you will again see the launch workspace. So you can log into your Databricks workspace in two ways. First is you come to Azure portal, find your workspace, launch page, launch workspace button and launch it and it will log into your workspace. Or you can keep this URL handy with you and directly hit the URL in the browser and it will allow you to directly log into your workspace without going to Azure portal. Once the work, Databricks workspace service is created, it might not be necessary to go to Azure portal for accessing the Databricks workspace. So here is the workspace and in the beginning it might look like this. You can click this skip onboarding button and it will go away. They might show some notification here. Uh, we are not interested, we can close this. And this is how your workspace, Databricks premium workspace looks like. In the next video, I'll help you walk through the premium workspace, all these uh, items, and we will become a little familiar with this Databricks platform UI or Databricks workspace UI. For now, let me close it. Uh, I'll come back to my Azure portal homepage. And you can see your resource group here. You can see your workspace here. You might also see Azure Databricks link in the Azure services at the top uh, because you have already used it. 
so it should be visible here you can come to your azure databricks service home page and you will see your workspace here you want to create more you can create more using this create button uh, all your workspaces will be listed here and you can click your workspace from here to see the launch button so there are many ways how you navigate to your workspace launch button and you can launch your workspace so that's all how to create a workspace one last thing that i want to mention here is if you are following along with the course and you want to do all these activities yourself and repeat uh, things that we are learning in this course you might want to create one workspace for yourself like we created here uh, databricks workspace is not an expensive resource so they do not charge a lot of money for creating a workspace so you might want to create one workspace and keep it there do not delete it for maybe a month or two or until you are done with your hands on activities or practice uh, for this course so databricks even if you are on the pay as you go subscription data creating databricks workspace and keeping that uh, in your azure account may not incur a lot of cost for you so do not worry uh, keep on deleting workspace and keep on creating new workspaces every day do not try do doing that you can create a workspace keep it there for a month or two and it won't cost you a lot of money that's all for this lecture see you again in the next lecture and i'll walk you through the workspace ui keep learning and keep growing